Defense. We don't really have one of those for the jungle yet, but maybe we will after this season. Who knows? Well, here we go. Picks and bans for game number one. I am versus CJ Entis. And there's that Rumble ban. Of course, uh, Rumble's been played quite a bit by both of these top laners. It's a priority for most top laners right now. Yeah, but everyone bans Rumble against Shy. That's a champion that no one wants to let him have right now. Yeah. If they can avoid it, we've seen how well he can play on that one. And he also taken out against Mad Life, trying to eliminate some of the hard engage. This makes me wonder if we're going to see a kite composition or a poke comp here from IM because Rumble and Annie being banned are two champions that can really get into your back line and deal a lot of damage and prevent you from kiting. I mean, it makes sense, right, to try to take away CJ's ability to engage well in team fights. I mean, they do, like we said, rely so much on team fighting as a kind of a vehicle for objective taking that it's a good thing to target, I suppose. Well, the problem is, is that if CJ, who you know loves Jace, decides to run a kite composition, you have really limited your options for engaging as well. I mean, Space Play is not a Corky, so they could go Jace Corky and just go for Poke Comp too, kind of, huh? Yes, that's the big problem. And in fact, CJ really likes to play Poke Comps. So in some ways, unless I am, can snap up a few of these champions to engage with first, they may end up trapping themselves just a hair. Something in a big tank for Shy, a tank for Mad Life, and then you go Nidalee, Jace, Corky. Could work. Yes, sickest poke You could just go Janna too with that. Yeah, so. yeah, Janna would work fine. Yeah, you need a little bit of disengage as well. Alistar's still open too for uh, Mad Life if he wants to grab it. Uh, they may try to take this Echo away from Coco, but I feel like the Jace is looking more tempting for Coco anyway. I think you probably take Alistair here if you're going to. I agree, it's a scarier pick. Going to, you're going to do that. There's also Grog is still available. Surprisingly, no jungle bans this time. Of course, you know, some changes to these champions, but Alistair is yeah. going to be that priority pick. I mean, Tucson played a lot of Gragas when he was jungling for IM, but Ambition never really did it that much. Only only two games this season because that champion. Because CJ usually bans it, uh, because they are not worried about Ambition's champion pool. They're yeah. worried about uh, what the enemy can play, because Ambition has shown that he can play Warrior Enchant Lee Sin or uh, Manjus Enchant in Italy just fine. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot more flexibility with Ambition, especially on early game junglers. So it's a way for CJ to get an early game jungle advantage um, without giving up too much because not so many players play the, the Lee Sin or the Nidalee in the current meta. Makes sense. And looks like they will go with that Gragas, perhaps. Well, I can get it. It does make sense. But picking the Echo so early is a bit interesting here. Of course, Frozen much more known as a control there mage player, and I think that's what you take, the Sivir instead. Yeah. Now, Sivir's ult was nerfed on 5.11, but you know, that really isn't going to change a whole lot. Uh, at a professional level, uh, the speed boost even for four seconds is going to be enough to do what you need to have done, because yeah. you're going to be coordinated enough as it is, that using that ultimate to attack a flank when someone's trying to flank you and kind of turn that fighter on its head or engage very efficiently. Everybody's going to be on the same page anyway, so I don't think that actually is going to be too consequential in terms of our Sivir picks. Well, I mean, let's face it. If you're playing late game at the professional level and you don't get what you need to get done out of four seconds with her ult, things are going to go really wrong either way. So yeah. Yeah. at the pro level, that really doesn't affect things. Well, IM's had some pretty interesting picks so far this season. We did see that Galio uh, last time out. But the Galio was fine. I mean, it wasn't great, but I understood where they were going. The Devourer Fizz jungle was terrible. <laughs> that was, I never even began to understood to understand where they were going with that one and what that had, had to do with their composition. Now, Hecarim is going to be selected. Something a bit more normal for IM. Yeah, Apple taking that flank pick already to try and deal with the Sivir and possibly discourage a Victor pick here from Coco. Victor falling awfully far down the draft this time. Yeah, and Lilac's going to be taking that Rek'Sai. So uh, comfortable, strong, fairly easy to play jungler for Lilac. Yeah, not too hard to engage with that. And there's that Jace. Will we see Coco lock it in? I feel like these changes were like, hey, Coco, we're in love with the Coco. We want to give you something. Here's a gift for you, Coco. One of your best champions. Improved. Well, I'd love to see the Bard. Yeah, you still haven't cast a Bard game. Uh, not since not since MSI, no. <laughs> <laughs> Those Bard games were not good. 
Yeah, a little bit different. Okay, Ooh, it's Mad time. Life. Mad Life playing Bard. There we go. That makes me happy, man. Finally, finally. My favorite support on my favorite support. All right, so Azir is going to be the more conservative lock, and CJ holding out a long time to pick a top laner here, even though they knew what that top lane matchup is. So this says they're still looking for the piece to kind of fit everything together right now. Could see some cool Bard ults, especially if he follows up on Ambition's ult. If Ambition breaks the enemy team apart with an explosive cast, Mad Life can just hit a couple targets on the back and then they can isolate and kill somebody immediately. Yeah, I mean, knocking someone into the uh, the Q from Bard, of course, with the Gragas ult creates some pretty nice CC. And then just able to kind of lock down half of the enemy team and engage on the other half is pretty nice too. So what is I am going to go with? Corky Victor seems pretty reasonable. What do you think about the Corky though? Good poke with Victor. Should be yeah. fine in this composition. You your balance your damage is balanced out that you would have uh, a lack of AD because you have Hecarim in the top side. So nice comp from IM, pretty standard stuff. Good front line, good flank. They can pretty much do it all. Oh well. Shen. Wow, Shen, he's back again. He did get some little buffs this patch. That explains what they were doing. That's why we yeah. had the last pick top laner. That there was makes some, sense. There was some weird shenanigans going on right there. So that's <laughs> the draft order is much clearer now as to why they did that. Now, wow. Shen didn't get too much of yeah. a buff. I, the biggest buff is probably his magic resistance growth uh, because now he's going to be much less vulnerable to poke and the AP without itemization, but... I believe his dash cost was reduced slightly yeah. too, yeah. So not, not the hugest changes, but maybe making him tanky enough. I mean, Shai is like one of the preeminent Shen players here in Korea, was for a long time. So not too surprising to see him picked up. I, I would have thought though, out of the Shen and the Jace, that we would have seen the Jace taken by Coco before the Shai from, uh, or the Shen from Shai. Well, I mean, this is, this really does fit in CJ's wheelhouse though. Remember that yeah. this is pretty much the old Frost roster with ambition at the jungle position. And Frost was always known throughout their entire competitive history as a Shen playing team. Oh yeah. A team that was very good at using Shen ults to deal with the team fights. Now here, there's not an obvious target for Shen to ult on really, so I'm curious how he's going to use it. There's no one who's really going to be going in. Unless Coco decides to go in with some crazy like Emperor Divide <laughs> knockback tricks, could be exciting. Well, here's what you do, a super long magical journey and then Shen ults you during the middle of it, so it just pops out the other end. So here we go, guys. Game number one, IM versus CJ. Who takes it? It's time to get in the game and find out. And welcome to Summoner's Rift. Incredible miracle. Taking on CJ Entis. The fans out in force, IM, always having a vocal fan base no matter how the team is doing. And this is actually Mad Life's first professional game on this Bard, too. Yep, it is indeed. So Very cool. Something changing here, at least for Mad Life, thinking that oh. it's time to bust out the Bard. I mean, they have plenty of they have plenty of speed for the engage. Yeah. I just really am curious how this Shen is going to be used. By coming this far in, he's going to make his chime spawn and you know deep in the enemy jungle, too. So I wonder if he's going to get to grab those on his way out. You know what's interesting when the Korean casters talk about magical journey? They always say it, magical journey. They, they always like have that intonation on it. I don't know why. It's hilarious. She, they also say she kind of looks like the Invisible Man when he was trying not to be invisible in that one movie. There. They also always say magical journey in English because, as yeah, they tell true. us, the Korean name is nowhere near as funny for magical journey. So they just like they like to use the English version. Magical journey. <laughs> Is that what you're going to do, Noah? That's, that's what I'll do. I'll try to do it the, the <laughs> Korean style. That's, that's what they say. Only my pronunciation was much better, I would have to say. <laughs> well, it looks like uh, perhaps a little bit of a blue steel here. They've got wards to protect Ambition and Shy. Yeah, they're going for it. Yeah, interesting pathing here right at level one from the jungle. 
especially since we actually have a 2v2 in the bottom side, but I suppose they have the information they need. They got, look at the Ring of Wards. They have one in between the Tier 1 and Tier 2 in mid lane, so they just knew that there was nobody in there. They're going to be able to 3-buff uh, Lilac pretty easily now, it seems like, too, because they've got Mad Life and uh, Space down in bottom lane to come up if they need to protect their own blue, so really uh, focusing on to Lilac already. Wow, Mad Life taking a lot of poke. You don't need to get that close to hurt people with Bard. There we oh, go. The, I am collage. The I am collage. Well, so in the end, Shy didn't actually hit level two off of that camp. So Apple's just going to TP right back in and hit that level two quickly. So basically what CJ's doing here is they said, we want to take away and make it hard on Lilac to jungle, which makes sense as a strategy considering that he may not be the most comfortable in that role, at least at the moment. So, but it is hurting Shy just a little bit in the top side. Obviously not that much, but. Yeah, he should be fine. He's already nearly caught up in CS and all that. And yeah, you'd, I would imagine Hecarim would just have a little bit of an edge early against Shen anyway. Do you think the shield from Shen is strong enough to kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Sekarim? Well, he doesn't have shield yet, so not no. Not yet, no. Yeah, I'm not, Maybe. I would not be that confident in it. But, and you can see Apple's really pushing the lane hard because one of Shen's flaws is he does have a hard time farming under the turret because not the best champion in oh, that. Oh, hello. Body slam onto Apple doing a decent amount of damage from Ambition. It's kind of hanging out, making sure that top lane turret doesn't take any more damage than it needs to. Yeah, holding off that on that blue buff as well. So question is, are they going to hand that over to Coco early? A distinct possibility. Lilac not going to find a whole lot in his topside jungle right there. And with Shy already pressed up, he does have limited options. Well, Shy's done a really good job farming under turret already, though. I mean, Apple came down to uh, tangle with Ambition a little bit, but Shy keeping up in CS so far. Yeah. Not too bad. The world's worst ninja's back. I'm happy. <laughs> Are you? I I'm am. not sure I'm happy. I think I miss I'm his silly sure. walk and his not being a ninja. I, I'm not sure he's actually back, though. I think that... I mean, this he's back be, for this game anyway. There, this may be a shy thing. I'm, I'm skeptical as to what he's going to be doing in the long run. As I would say it's definitely a shy thing, but will it be a good shy thing? Or a thing that other people do? <laughs> or is it going to be another Shivana where that only shy will play? Yeah. But he does very well on it. Well, if anyone was going to try it, certainly, certainly would have been this guy, so. Well, I'm... I'm curious. I mean, you would think that he was going to go Sunfire Cape here because that hmm. Sh uh, Shen really needs that item to have any semblance of wave clear and not have this Hecarim just shove him in and dictate the pressure in the side lanes in the way in the late game. So you would think that that's what he's going to be going first. Obviously, he has taken that flash, didn't want to chance it with a smite in the top lane, but that may allow Apple just some more pressure. And like I said, normally you see that shy and you, you think, well, he's going to be going for a composition that has a champion that he can clearly engage on. Mm -hmm. And again, you can do that with Azir, one would think, but there is a lot of risk to that. You know, I, I kind of like the idea of top teleport uh, or top smite Shen, though, too, because, I mean, you've got the, you still got that little AOE like you would have gotten from Sunfire Kite anyway, but the ability to taunt back into the back lines and challenging smite their AD carry, you know, that seems seems pretty good. If you can if you can hit that ability, I mean, taunt is not the most reliable ability to get into the back lines. That's why you usually need somebody to ride in on who has better engage, which is what CJ's lacking, unless Ambition or Coco go really deep. Certainly could happen. Or if Ambition can get somebody out of the back lines with his ult. Well, his bottom lane has been uh, a lot of trading, but not a lot else. Lilac just stops by to drop a ward. And so far, not really deciding to make any plays. Here we go, Emperor's Divide frozen, flashing away. Lilac back to support. They don't catch Coco. Ult traded for uh, both summoners on... Frozen side though, so definitely a win for CJ. Yeah, Frozen didn't even have his ult yet. That was a really good timing from CJ coming in right as Coco got level six. And had Frozen not had those fast fingers seeing Gragas come out of the bushes, he would have been, had a really bad time. Yep. But again, those. Ooh. Oh, Whoa, Roar getting low. Ignar though, headbutt space into the wall though. That probably saved Roar from having to burn any summoners. Yeah, pretty. Pretty nice little trade there for CJ Antis, but they are going to give time for 
LZIM's bottom lane, just a recall. Shai has that Cinder already and is starting to look for deep wards in the enemy jungle. Shai really likes to get these deep wards in because he really likes proxy farming when he can get the opportunity. Shai has a very good sense of how to play the map and how to play around the enemy jungler. We're seeing that here. Yeah. So Rek'Sai coming over the, for the blue buff right now. Will secure it this time alongside Frozen. So there's not going to be any further invades courtesy of CJ Entis, especially since Ignar is up in that top side, just on the off chance that there was a little bit of a skirmish around that, since they know that CJ had that timer and was aggressive enough to take the first one. So here's a question for you. Why does Victor have like a staff that he shoots lasers out of and stuff when he already has like a third robo arm that does it? Doesn't it seem kind of redundant? Do you, you know, can you least... ever have too few lasers? Yeah, but if I'm going to have another one, I'm going to give myself like a fourth robot arm instead of like something I have to carry around. Because essentially by having to carry the staff all the time, he still only has two functional arms that he can pick things up with and stuff. Maybe there's a high rate of failure on his uh, on his shoulder mounted arms and the staff is more reliable. Maybe. But still, I would rather mount it like a GoPro to my head or something, you know? <laughs> That'd be cool. It'd be hard to mount something the size of a staff to your head. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you wouldn't mount the whole thing, just like the end, you know? The end that shoots well, stuff. Well, how, how do you know that that's the only part that sh that contributes to the shooting of stuff, though? Well, any sort of electronics what if, could what? be strung down the back of your head, down your spine, to like a cool like backpack app apparatus, right? It's I've like, got this all planned out. I'm going to build it when I get home tonight. I'm going to come back. It's going to be great. Great. Are you going to try and then get me to join the glorious evolution? Yeah, absolutely. You want to join? No. You only have to pay like $50,000 to get to the like <laughs> second level of my glorious evolution. Well, then I'll tell you the real secrets of the glorious evolution. This is sounding a lot like Scientology. No, no. It's completely <laughs> different. We're way more legit, man. We're way more. Just come for a weekend on my like mega prison yacht, and I will tell you all about it. Sounds good. I'll be there. Did I say prison yacht? <laughs> I meant mega fun times yacht. My bad. That's just slipped out sometimes, you know? <laughs> Don't believe the papers. <laughs> well, CS leads in all uh, all the lanes except for bot for CJ right now. And space still pretty close either way. Actually, a pretty sizable one going in mid lane now. Huh. Yeah, Coco, well, he did force Frozen out of lane just a little bit right uh -oh. there. There we go. Hyper Zavide oh. onto Lilac. Ambition trying to catch him. Lilac a bit low. Nice. And first blood goes to Ambition. Great catch with that explosive cast. Madlife throws in the ultimate, but can't quite land it onto Frozen. Well, Frozen, basically that ultimate was forcing Frozen to make a choice. If he was going to continue to be aggressive and go into lane, then he was going to have to walk there to get more spells off. If he went under tower, then he was no longer a threat. So yeah. they were just trying to prevent the turnaround gank because a lot of those ultimates had already been used. Ambition using his explosive cask to keep Lilac there, and Lilac remembers what it's like to be a pro player as he gets oh up first blood, and Roar Whoa. just going to die to the Blood flash thirsty auto. bard, mad life. Grabs the kill there. That's what I like to see. Oh, yeah. He'll use that passive. He deserved it. Kill secured. He's back. He never He never left. We'll get it. Well, he did. Okay, he left for a while. But now he's back. And CJ going to take a dragon with that as well. Nice. Pretty easy conversion right there, especially since Frozen doesn't have that ultimate to really contest with any form of damage. So I like to try and steal. And he's got a good chance. He got it. Oh, he did. Lilac giving up first blood, coming right back and stealing the dragon. Wow. Like they could have stuck around and killed him there, too. <laughs> oh, CJ is very generous today. Here, have a dragon and your life. Wow. I'm actually quite surprised. I mean, Lilac did have flash to get out of that if he needed to. But yeah, you want to make him burn it, though, right? A little bit of a tussle. And even though Coco had the pressure in the mid lane and Frozen was pushed all the way under the turret, just no one else there. I guess they were slightly afraid because space was out of lane as well. Mm -hmm. But that seemed like really something you could do pretty easily. Well, it was one of those kind of welcome back things. You're like, oh, it's been so long since Lilac played, I guess. I mean, we got first blood on him. We don't need to be that mean. Let's give him a dragon. Good guy, CJ. It's like, we don't really want a perfect game use, so here's no. your dragon. Yeah, it's nice. Now, Manlife hasn't really left bot lane too often to collect chimes. I, I wonder how many he's been able to pick up so far. 
Maybe they'll click on him later and we'll find out. Oh, Frozen getting caught there. Ignar may save him, pushing Ambition away. Nope, that's a lot of damage. Frozen still life flashes over the wall now. And Tempered Fate hits him. Mad Life trying to get there for the kill. He's got to time the Q, can't quite hit it. Meanwhile, Lilac getting a bit low. It looks like Frozen's going to escape here. Whoa, Mad Life went deep for the kill. He couldn't get it. Oh, Mad Life. Well, I, re I respect the effort. Well, a bit of a confusing a weird team fight. fight. It started off actually so it was a really good start because Coco used the Emperor's Divide, and it looked like Mad Life hit his Q to tether him to the, the Emperor's Divide wall because that counts as terrain. Right. And so that was an interesting interaction there, nifty interaction set up. But Mad Life hit the Tempered Fate, but then got bounced back under the turret by Ignar while he was ulting. And so, he was like one auto away from getting that kill, too. Yeah, it was very, very close. Couldn't get it in the end, though. It happens. Just got to build more AP, right? I mean, you just have to do more damage initially. So you got to load up on AP for your Q. Yeah, man. Absolutely. And your passive. Your meeps. The world's most powerful meeps. Yep. Elite meeps. Well, in spite of that unfortunate engagement for CJ, they still actually have a pretty nice lead going down. No turrets yet. This is all coming through. Uh, the CS and basically just one kill. Yeah. So they've, they've been managing to be pretty dominant in spite of that little well mistake there made by Mad Life. I mean, it's typical CJ, right? You know, you give up a kill or two early, maybe give up a little objective, but then you stay even enough, stay a little bit ahead, and then you start winning team fights in the mid and late game. Shy could be in a bit of trouble here at Lilac coming in to try to get that knockup. Shy dodging it, still gets knocked up anyway. Talents out of the bush. Can he make it away? Ambition coming in to try to help. He's got his ult. Shy turning now, and yeah, Lilac and Apple know what's up. Shy back just away. intelligently holding on to his E there until yeah. the knockup had come through. And that way he's able just to taunt right out. And he's already getting tanking enough. Notice he has a Sunfire cape already finished. Because if there's one thing a stealthy ninja needs, it's an on-fire cape. Yeah, it, it really, the on-fire cape just allows you to broadcast your presence more readily to everyone around right. you. He's like, he dives in with a flaming cape, throwing swords at people. Ta Shen taunting the ninja. them, yelling insults yeah. the entire it's like, time. You <laughs> suck! <laughs> it's like, oh, is that Shen? <laughs> of course, who else would it be? <laughs> I'm the best. He's like the, the ninja version of like the O'Doyles from that Adam Sandler movie. Like, Shen rules! <laughs> That's, you know, if I was if I was Shen and I was like ulting in, I would yell Shen rules at the top of my, <laughs> the top of my lungs as I came in with my flaming cape and <laughs> throwing swords. <laughs> That'd be pretty great. Why not wear tap dancing shoes at this point, Shen? Oh, oh, here's Emperor's another divide. balance. Frozen's there. Gravity yeah. Field is down. Ambition zoning out Lilac, giving Coco some time to finish off his mid lane opponent. Looks like that'll be enough. Ambition comes in to grab the kill anyway. He uses his ult to secure it. Shy deciding to just kind of <laughs> chill out on top of Frozen's body for a while. I've seen this kind of thing in Halo. <laughs> He's just there for the, the disrespect. <laughs> Actually, like, not even remotely having to burn his ult right there. <laughs> no. I don't think that was particularly necessary, but yep. you know he did it for the sweet assist. He did. You got to get those assists, right? Press R, get an assist. I mean, it's almost as easy as Karthus. There's one more click uh, with Shen, so it's actually yeah. twice as hard as doing it with Karthus. Thank you very much. Twice don't. as hard as Karthus <laughs> is still almost as easy as Karthus, because Karthus is so much easier than anybody else. <laughs> You know, if you look at like the bell curve of easy assists <laughs> via ultimates, Shen and Karthus are on the, the pretty far end of that one. <laughs> yep. Right there with uh, like Soraka, you know? <laughs> no, Soraka is as easy as Karthus. As we do yeah. see the bottom lane turret go down, oh, conveniently right before this dragon spawns, so. A little bit too conveniently. It's almost like they planned it ahead of time. Yeah. It is almost like Ambition has already pink warded that brush so he can get this dragon easily. Suspicious. I've seen this kind of thing. What I haven't seen, I haven't seen a single magical journey from Mad Life yet this game. It's kind of disappointing. Oh, never mind. There we go. He didn't even need to do it. He's like, Your wish is my commando. Thank you, Mad Life. I appreciate it. The shortest magical journey in the history of magical journeys. <laughs> 
I don't know why they say it like the guy from the room, <laughs> but they do. We're glad, we're glad they do. What a great film that is. So TP up for Shy, but no actual Shen ultimate right here. Stand United not available. Shy pretty handily winning these duels against the Hecarim right now with all that armor. Yeah, he's doing pretty well. CJ zoning tempered fate. They caught Lilac, and they also caught the support as well. Can they do something? Ambition taking a lot of damage. Whoa, he actually goes down. Nice re-engage from Frozen, throwing down the Chaos Storm space. And a lot of trouble goes over the wall, gets exhausted, makes it out. Roar trapped against the wall. Emperor's Divide throws Frozen back into the river, and it looks like CJ has found the fight that they've been looking for. That's a double kill for Coco. Starting to come in for space as well, too. He gets the double as well. And Mad Life just throwing in a magical journey for the heck of it. They can take mid lane turret, then take Dragon. This is just classic CJ right here. So CJ took that fight and they went all in right there because Mad Life uh, hit the ultimate, but also Shy had chunked out Apple in the top side, which meant that Apple had to recall before he was healthy enough to engage. Meanwhile, Shy was able to be that immediate presence. So it was a bit of a sloppy engage from CJ, but it was still smart of them to pull the trigger because they had that health advantage on the top laner, so the cleanup was there. Yep. And an easy drag, and Apple comes in to uh, use his ult. He's like, ah, I better use my ult. Let me get low enough, and I'll have to use my ult. CJ ties up the dragons, and uh, way ahead of this one. 5k gold lead at about 1830. Yeah, if you take a look at this, so Great ult. Shy was just finishing off that top turret. There's the ult, but Ambition actually mistimes the stasis, so he doesn't hit his uh, body slam right as they come out of it. So that's not very good coordination from CJ, but Roar goes way too deep, just gets queued into the wall by Bard and bursted down. Uh, of course, Coco's Azir play in the scene fight, very good, just trying to zone out for space on the side, get that extra damage. And then Shy's gonna show up with that TP, and Hecarim is just nowhere to be seen in that entire engagement. Yep, pretty easy 4v4 4v5 for CJ, and Mad Life ah. really showing how that tempered fate can be used to set up those team fights. The old Black Cleaver Shen. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Why not? I, I mean, that must Could be, be Trinity Force. I suppose. Which is an extra ruby crystal. Th yeah, there's that ruby crystal there is yeah. making me think that this is actually going to be <laughs> a very interesting Black Cleaver build that we're seeing coming through from Shy, just to split push as effectively as possible against this Hecarim. There's that cooldown reduction, very useful on Shen, generally speaking. So not the most orthodox build, but definitely something a little bit interesting. No counting on just being tanky enough from the Sunfire Cape and his new magic resist per level, I suppose. I'll probably get some more MR later, but it's not really a too terribly big factor for him yet if he just wants to elongate this split pushing phase and yeah whoa oh. flash body uh, slam nice all by ambition totally catch frozen frozen getting very low as all mad life coming in to get the slow to help space pick up that kill ignar trying to make something happen he gets caught trapped against the wall with that q from mad life ambition makes it out of the fight shy coming down to ult him just to make sure he stays safe in another nice little team fight for CJ. Well, Shy really saved Ambition right there with that ultimate. Yeah. Uh, had he not, that Phosphorus Bomb might have been able to take him out. Probably would have, it looked like. And now CJ is going to comfortably push into this mid lane. Oh, so comfortable. Oh, that's not so comfortable for Apple. Tries to ult away with that Onslaught of Shadows. Shy is going to flash out. Magical journey, although they're not really going to go where they need to go. <laughs> Tempered fate. <laughs> Dodged. I'm barred and I helped. <laughs> Well, he was actually helping. He zoned with the Tempered Fate. If, if, the, uh, if the Tempered Fate hadn't been there, then Apple may have been able to get away. But because yeah. he had to turn back, Coco was able to pick up the kills. And man, yeah. Coco's Azir play has been so on point this game. He has hit a lot of extremely good alts. Yeah. And worked well with Ambition also. Yeah. So that time. Well, uh, Ambition for a, you know, for a jungler that hasn't played a lot of Gragas either this season, clearly showing that it's not because he can't. Oh, no. Uh, it's just because. They don't need it to win. Ambition definitely looking very solid mechanically on this Gragas with some of these engages. Yeah. Uh, that's It's the Azir play that's really impressing me here from Coco. I feel like Meeps is too mild of a turn for, uh, for Bard's little buddies, right? I don't know. What do they need to be called then? Murder friends. <laughs> Murder buddies. It starts, it starts with them. Let's use it. I mean, if you watch that little bard cartoon, he is he's not exactly there to help everybody out. 
No, he's not. He, yeah. does, he doesn't really care at all. He just grabs that thing. He's like, oh, thanks for the glowing bowling ball. Your village is getting destroyed. Oh, sorry. Peace out. Yeah, there was a lot of really good story in that video I found. A lot of context for what was going on and the actions taking place. It's like Bard, our hero, he's here to say, oh, he's not. <laughs> Space tries to uh, get away, but being exhausted makes that hard. Nice play from Ignar getting that body slam back into the rest of his team. Yeah, Space thought he was safe right there because he had a couple teammates in the jungle and he had a decent amount of wards, but he didn't really respect the fact that they could come through lane like that, and Ignar with the flash combo did him in. And considering they didn't have any eyes on four members at the time of IM, it was still risky for him to go that far forward because at best it could have been a 3v4 in IM's favor. So you feel like Bard is, you know, such a good example of a bloodthirsty support, right? Because from that cartoon we learned that Bard really is not a team player. He's just there to, you know, get what he wants and then uh, go take a break, you know? Play his, like, weird horn thing. Just chill out. Where do you think he goes? Probably just home. Just sits on the couch until the next artifact pops up, right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe just goes home and plays some League of Legends. Summons himself. <laughs> I don't know. I would imagine that uh, he probably spends a lot of time uh, getting like haircuts and stuff. Is it actually Stylist. hair? I don't know. Maybe it's little tiny sentient tentacles too. Maybe it's a colony of other animals that live on his face. <laughs> we just don't know. We don't know. We need we need more lore to explain no. this. No, we do not need more lore. That well, is... how else are we going to find out? Do we just get to make stuff up? Yeah, sure. Oh, I, I, okay. I mean, that's that's what that's what the, the lore is going to be anyway. So maybe the meeps are born from Bard's sentient hair thing. Slylak has a flash over the wall there. Roar, Valkyrie away. Madlife. Flashes in to try to get the slow, which he does get, but CJ not quite able to follow that up with a kill. Well, trying to make a pick right there, but not really able to commit. Against CJ, uh, not the best crowd control for engaging unless Mad yeah. Life can actually hit that temperate fate. And try and make a pick right here. Oh, Roar well, against that's God. that's easy. Oh. Yeah, Mad Life. <laughs> woo! Gets it. That was a wimpy woo, but you get the idea. <laughs> And now the dragon spawning, so they got the pick they needed right before the dragon spawn. Lilac going to activate that and take a little bit of damage, and CJ going to casually stroll over and see if they can secure this objective. Lilac is there, though. He's going to try another steal. Would be a bit overbold. Here comes a TP. Yeah, Shen. they're going to try to stop it. Shen coming in, tries to get the taunt down onto Frozen. Frozen pops that ghost to try to get away. Can't do it. So both summoners used by Frozen, and he still goes down. Nice zoning by Coco as CJ takes an easy second dragon. And they are so far ahead this game. Three turrets to one, two dragons to zero, 12 kills to three. And why not a bottom turret with that too? Yeah, why not a kill with right that as right well? into that taunt. Apple very low. I mean, had that pulverize onto Coco and Shy, but doesn't matter. There's nobody there to do damage from IM. And yeah, they're going to start setting up a siege right now. Lilac. Behind the turret while space pushes it up. Long magical journey. Just get back in position. It's in not front of the long. tower. I feel like Bard is always kind of yawning too, you know? Oh, and the pulverize on your mission gets exhausted. Whoa! Ignar just disappeared, man. Lilac gone as well too. Another double kill for Coco. And nice tempered fate catches Roar, and that is gonna be another easy kill. Looks like they managed to barely take out ambition there, but Apple's gonna pay for it. Shy's still alive at Mad Life picks up another one. They finally take down Coco, but magical journey. Oh, here comes Frozen. Get ready for the Q. Oh, he missed time. Oh, I thought he missed time to Q for a second. Barely hit that. Shy's like, is Frozen over there? Yep, yep, he is. He is. Oh, Frozen. they're gonna kill Frozen. Check this out. They're gonna turn. Watch, he's gonna follow through. Frozen doesn't have Chaos Storm. They definitely could turn on that. I know. I feel like they they could have, man. They could have been tricky with the uh, with the cosmic binding. <laughs> Would have been possible, yeah. So much better than the the regular planetary binding. Yep. The cosmic binding. So much bigger. Oh, it's, what? It, which doesn't make sense because it's a very low range skill shot. <laughs> what the hell is a cosmic binding anyway? I don't know, man. It's a bond that that brings you and Bard closer together. <laughs> in that he is going to kill you. I I don't, I just don't get how some of these abilities get named like. How is it 
I, I understand how it's a binding. Okay, got me there. Got me there. It sure. binds two things together, whether it's two enemies or a, a minion and an enemy or them to a wall. Okay, got it. Binding. All right. Check. What is cosmic about it? Because, Monty, things in the universe are made of other things, <laughs> and those things can cosmically be drawn together <laughs> through the power of magic. <laughs> That's what Bard is all about. Although, uh, apparently, what Bard is all about is collecting these, like, powerful artifacts. So I don't even know why he's fighting with anybody in League of Legends. So shouldn't he just, like, hold up, like, rob the shopkeeper and then leave? <laughs> like, when you play Bard, shouldn't he just, like, show up, all the items in the shop disappear, and then that guy, like, logs out? Then they put him on FBI's Most Wanted. Yeah. Like, Terra's Most Wanted. <laughs> wanted for stealing, like, everything. <laughs> he's kind of a big house. Indiana Jones is so mad at Bard. <laughs> so it can be longs in a museum, Bard. Not your house. <laughs> Ashaya's little shrine there just to do a little speed boost and head the other way. And here we go. Oh, and Ambition comes through the magical journey. Gets headbutted right back over the wall, though. And they wanted to make a pick right there. But again, a lot of disengage for Incredible Miracle or zoning with things like the gravity field. So they're not really able to get the angle they want, even with that magical journey. It looks like they are just going to start the Baron eventually. Well, they Maybe. won't as long as Ambition is standing there. Well, they can certainly bait it. I mean, I am can't fight right now, so uh, CJ can kind of do whatever they want here. Their lanes are pushed up. Yeah. Shy went for the Trinity Force. Hmm. He did. I thought so. Yeah. Whoa. Ignar gets caught. Explosive cask used. A lot of damage coming in, and Ignar taken out very easily. And now I think it's the time you start the Baron. Yep, they will. You know, with the changes to uh, Shen's passive and the fact that it's up more at later levels, it does increase his damage output pretty significantly. That's a good point, actually, when you think about that with the Trinity Force. Yeah, whoa! Meanwhile, IM comes in and has two people just get immediately vaporized. Apple on the run, a magical journey brings Apple to doom. Now back to oh, the yeah. Baron. That's right. Well, Lilac's like, sorry guys, I was in the enemy jungle. Couldn't help you. Oh, Shy is Rek'Sai hunting. Nope, nope, not anymore. I was nope. just looking for Rek'Sai right now, making sure that there's not going to be a chance of this steal. Shy just... Oh, oh, oh he's trying. Nice no, intercept. Shy was ready, yeah. There with the taunt, Lilac taken out. And Madlife with yet another kill. Bard adding to his collection. It'd be cool to go to Bard's house. Probably got like a lot of awesome stuff, you know? Like, uh, I don't know, like Bigfoot and uh, the Ark of the Covenant and like <laughs> Han Solo frozen in carbonite. It's probably got a lot of really cool stuff. Just goes into other fictions and uh, takes takes their stuff too. Why not? And oh yeah, that like glowing ball thing too from the, from the cartoon. Yeah. Maybe that's why Victor only has one like single arm on his back because Bard took the other one. <laughs> Did he just take both? Who knows? This is a kind of this is a kind of support game I like to see though. Four, one, and thirteen. I mean, to be fair, Bard's passive once you get a lot of chimes can do a pretty decent amount of damage when it comes to closing out kills, securing them, if you will. <laughs> Definitely is having a good game and a lot higher kill of a game than we normally see from CJ also. They've been yeah. very much focused on picks in this game and doing objectives only after they get kills. Well, here oh we go. Oh boy, Ignar tries to start something. Uh, Emperor's Divide just keeps IM trapped over against Space. Madlife coming in. They've caught and frozen and he's going to go down even with that ult from Hecarim over the top of everything. I am just way too far behind right now. Space trapped against the wall there. Can he survive? Gets the kill on the Lilac. Will he actually be able to get away? A double kill for him? He does. Wow. Space makes it out. That was about as close as it gets. Madlife picking up another kill in there too. Pretty awesome to see for me. <laughs> well, magical journey. CJ sort of messed up that engage because Coco went in with the Emperor's Divide, but it coincided with Madlife's Bard ult yeah. so that Frozen actually didn't get pushed out from underneath the turret. It just caught Frozen and Coco behind the turret both. It was a zoning Emperor's Divide. <laughs> and that meant that uh, it really didn't do a whole lot right there and problematic because Coco then was behind 
enemy lines deep underneath the turret and wasn't really able to contribute to that fight and died very early on. Luckily, they're 18,000 gold ahead, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. That is true. Maybe a third dragon coming in for CJ. They were able to take that top inhibitor, of course, with the Baron buff. And getting this little movement speed boost is going to be very nice when it comes to chasing down whatever members of IM don't immediately die in the next team fight. Uh, Whoa, here, we, here go. we go. Yeah, wow, that is a fast bard. Oh, man. Righteous glory. Yeah, Lilac gets uh, slowed down by the cosmic binding. But no follow-up, really. He might have grabbed a couple chimes, too, because the speed is cumulative when you pick up one chime after another. Wow, I really like how many of CJ's champions on this composition can go over walls. I mean, that is cool, terrain yeah. really isn't an issue for this team. Even if they don't have their own abilities up, they always have that magical journey just to fall, follow through and get picks in the jungle. And that's probably why CJ has been so determined to do so. That makes sense. Now the Siege on this bottom lane turret. CJ just walking in. Again, they're so far ahead, they really don't need to worry about a fight. Ambition tries for the body slam on Lilac. Doesn't connect. Looks like they'll be happy taking the inhibitor anyway. And so two inhibitors down, and everybody magical journeys out. Whoa, never mind. Coco comes in for an Emperor's Divide. A little bit of missing communication for CJ there. Is Azonia's enough? Tempered Fate Coco comes out of the Zonias after the Tempered Fate Lanzo, so he dies. Meanwhile, Space a little bit caught, but still doing so much damage. Shy comes in for the Taunt on to Apple to make sure that Space stays just fine, and it looks like that could very well be the end of the game. CJ only lacking Coco. Yeah, they're just gonna push forward right now, and CJ, a lot of the stuff I've seen with the Bard, them uh, when they are trying to execute these team fights, looks a little bit, a bit off, off still. That yeah. was another instance where the Zonias wasn't entirely timed well with Mad Life's uh, tempered fate to get that initiation, but Roar just gonna get stapled to the wall oh, goodbye. and go down, space with another kill. And there it is, the end of the game. CJ Entis cruising to a victory, 21,000 gold ahead at the end of that one. Far bloodier than most CJ Entis games. Yeah. They really were looking to engage constantly, to play very aggressively, to make picks before doing objectives. Usually CJ is a team that just likes to poke you out and then do the objective after that. So a bit different from what we're used to seeing. Maybe not the most comfortable on that. Again, the Bard is so hard to play as a team. It, it really does change the way the team plays. And no one has really done what I would consider a truly amazing Bard game yet anywhere. Yeah. It was, um, this one was good, but yeah, the miscoordination was still still a little bit present. But either way, it's a victory for CJ, and you got to wonder, too, if life had already altered. So I blame them. <laughs> Mad Life was perfect. CJ Antis versus I am came number two. No. The look on Monty's <laughs> face tells me that he, he may disagree with me at this point. <laughs> we'll see what they ban out this time. I mean, I, I don't really think you need to worry about Lilac too much. He was... Uh, kind of a non-factor on that Rek'Sai last game. There's a vein band against Roar. Yeah, that has really been a priority pick for them so far, and it's something that Roar has done, you know, decently on, and now that they don't have to ban the Callista, that they are on the blue side, or the Rise, it does free them up to do something. Perhaps they'll still ban the Evelyn this game, but other than that, they won't have those same level of obligations. Now, where do you go if you're... I am right here, because you didn't want them to have the Annie, the Rumble, or the Nautilus last time. Shy, very dangerous on many of those champions, and actually CJ just gonna ban the Rumble out themselves, and... Hmm. Okay. Well, they could be gearing up for an Alistar first pick. Yeah, they, they, probably, they probably will just go for an Alistar or a Gragas first pick. CJ, with that same priority that many teams have these days. So I wonder if, if they would go for a Gragas first pick, they would have to ban out either Siv or Alistar for the last ban, wouldn't they? Because you wouldn't want to give Sivir Alistar over. I think they're just going to ban out Evelyn or Gragas here, depending on what they feel they want IM to have. Hmm. I think you could just ban out the Gragas, and then if they ban out the Alistar, then you have some more options, such as first picking Sivir. Yeah, I like that. Makes sense. We'll see what CJ's last ban is going to be. A couple seconds to decide, and it will be... Rumble, or no, not Rumble, that's Rek'Sai. Sorry with an R. Rek'Sai, okay, so taking away the 
jungle that Lilac right. played. So I wonder if we will see that Gragas first pick then if it's not banned here. So if you're IM, you probably should leave up both uh, Gragas and Alistair and get one of them because if they're going to ban Rek'Sai last, they're almost certainly going to first pick Gragas because they're yeah. trying to see what else Lilac can play here and how deep his champion pool goes. He wasn't that effective on the Rek'Sai last game, but he could be made even less effective if this Gragas isn't banned. It's going to be a Bard ban, so that is probably just going to be a Gragas pickup first right here. Otherwise, that Rek'Sai doesn't make a lot of sense as a ban. Yeah, there it is. CJ may be kind of trying to get IM to start thinking that uh, Coco is going to play Jace this game as well, too. We'll see. What did you think of uh, Shai Shen last game? I thought it was okay, uh, but not really anything to write home about, as it were. Uh, I think it worked fine. I like Shen as a champion just because he has those two teleports instead of just the one, so it gives him that much more time to be a threat on the map. But again, I just don't think that composition was very good with Shen mm. because it was mostly just a lot of reactive Shen ultimates as opposed to Shen really being in a position to get taunts. We didn't also see Shy doing any kind of crazy taunt flashes or anything like that to hit yeah. multiple people that you could do as Shen. So I don't know. He looked a bit rusty, but it was it was an okay performance, but I just think he could have done a lot better with a different composition. All right, so Alistar Sivir picked up by IM after the first pick Gragas from CJ. Pretty pretty expected. And you know CJ knew this was coming. So they yeah. have a plan. They have a plan to deal with this. I like what IM did, though. They didn't ban the Alistar. As soon as they saw the Rek'Sai, they should have known just to ban something else. So they banned the Bard instead, hoping that perhaps Ignar can have a better laning phase without that Bard on the board. Even though, of course, my life can play lots of other things. Nautilus, Thresh, um, Annie, champions, two of which were banned, Annie and Nautilus, in the last game. So he does actually have a lot more freedom, even with that Bard banned. So many people hovering over the Velkaz lately. It's like Velkaz is the new talent. There's some sort of running joke going on. Yeah, I mean, Velkaz is just so terrible. Sadly. Yeah, I think if Zir would be a, a solid pick as well, too, and with the Corky, they could be going for some poke. Uh, I like the Corky pickup here. You've got the Azir still. You have plenty of poke damage and zone control with this composition so far. And you've got plenty of disengage, too, to deal with the Sivir and the Alistair. I mean, the on the hunt doesn't help you so much if you're contending with terrain like Emperor's Divide. Yeah. Hmm, will we see Frozen pick up this Echo? And it could go to jungle, could go to top as well, too. Although, uh, with that pick, I would imagine it will be top. Who knows, maybe Lilac is some sort of like jungle echo god and we had no idea. Uh, just given my observations of Lilac's mechanics throughout his career, I would not necessarily tap him to be that jungle echo player. I'd be a bit surprised. I'd, I'd be a little bit shocked myself. But meanwhile, remember Apple likes to play champions like Vladimir in the top lane. and. This screams out to me, Apple, as a, just as a champion player combination, much more than Lilac. Oh, yeah. I agree completely. So, Rengar, probably not going to get picked up. We'll see what CJ decides to go with. They need that bot lane, or they need rather their support and their top laner, theoretically. Shy playing Riven would be a, a big surprise. I what think he's just going to go back to that Shen again, honestly, and play with Annie, something that may have a bit more engage potential. They're still lacking somebody who actually goes into the enemy team, though, for Shen to ride into battle on. And what about a Mundo, too, in this pick against the uh, double AP? I would just be a little bit worried about Mundo's laning phase because they haven't seen anything. Well, it, I don't know how the Mundo Echo matchup goes. I imagine that doesn't go too well for Mundo. Well, he certainly is going to get poked out quite a bit. Looks like it will be Shy Annie, though. Or uh, Shen Annie, rather. Shy Shen. Shen Shy. And the final pick for LZIM. And uh, you'd have to imagine it's going to be a jungler here. Or maybe, maybe it is that jungle echo. There's, oh, boy. There's no doubt jungle echo is good. That's not the question. It is a good jungle pickup. It's just, can Lilac do enough with it to justify the selection? Instead of Apple, a player who you know can do quite well on that. And not to mention that Apple did actually struggle in lane against the Shen last time, uh, especially with that 
I think if he switches to Ignite, it may be a different story because a lot of it was that he was just behind in terms of his build because he had to get the Skirmisher Saber and then he was getting out traded by Shen. If he goes Ignite this game, it could be a different time. Yeah. I just don't know about this jungle echo. It looks like that's what it's going to be. They're going to let it lock in. Yeah. All right. Well, Lilac mechanically hasn't been able to quite keep up with, uh, you know, most champions. And so will he be able to make a difference on a, a fairly mechanically intense champion like Echo? I'm very skeptical, but I do like the fact that Apple has switched over to this Ignite. So he's going to try this matchup again, except this time he's going to have a little bit more early power so he doesn't get constantly harassed down by Shy Shen like he did in the last game building that Trinity Force a little bit faster, getting some more early offensive items, and then having the kill pressure as well with that Ignite on a champion like Shen that doesn't have the highest amount of mobility. Uh, interesting selection, and this will probably be a pretty different laning phase, so Lilac will be the one playing the Echo in the jungle. Yeah, now, we, sh we saw Shy get to lane a little bit late without that level two last game. I feel like you can't risk it this time around with the Ignite on the other side. What do you think? Uh, yeah, that level two quickly it might be an issue because Apple did have that faster level two while Shy kind of took half experience but didn't actually commit to being into the lane. Uh, it might, might be an issue. We'll see how it goes for him if Apple has a different plan now that he knows that Shen isn't going to be taking a camp at level one. Oh, we'll have to see what happens. I am trying to tie things up, but CJ looking very strong in game number one. A strong composition to try to do the same thing with. In game number two, Mad Life has been deadly on that Annie. Second MVP incoming. Maybe we'll have to find out, guys. Game number two is starting right now. And welcome to Summoner's Rift. Incredible miracle taking on CJ Entis and CJ. They really do need a 2-0 here. You know, they've it's been a slump. They've lost their last three matches. Looked a little bit better in their last one, but still. I would say they looked substantially better against Najin. I mean, the, the loss to Jin Air was just, that was very surprising to see them play so poorly. Uh, all the way from draft through the gameplay itself. So they're going to get seen here heading into the tri brush. That means some counter warding early from LZ Incredible Miracle. Now we saw CJ steal blue buff last game. Now do you think they're going to try something similar with red perhaps? Uh, I mean they could. They had that t uh, ward in between the tier one and two. Looks like they're going to go for that same warding pattern again. Yeah, maybe just uh, do you think this would mean a lane swap too? Um, I mean it didn't mean a lane swap last time. So they were just happy to see if I am started on the opposite side of the jungle and they knew that there was nobody in there. It was a very safe buff to take. And it looks like that's going to be the same style of play that we see this time around again. Hmm. Of course, we do see Shy now wrapping all the way back around. And now I am going to know that this is going down. They have eyes on Gromp slash blue buff and on the Krug entrance as well. So they should have a good idea that this is going to be happening. And so the question is, are they going to respond? This would be a good adaptation for them just to go to straight to enemy red buff this game and try and take that away. Meanwhile, Shy just going to walk over to lane after helping a little bit with Ambition's Leash. They're going to see that no one is actually en route to the top lane. So what yeah. does Echo do now, though? Goes back, I guess. I, I wonder, too. I don't know enough about uh, Jungle Echo just yet to know you know, how well he's able to burn through those early camps. He got a lot of help this time, but okay, canceling that recall. Huh. He didn't cancel the recall. That was Hecarim's recall. Oh, you're recall. right. Hecarim was just on standing top on of him. him. Yeah, they were ah, on top of each other. So I was going to be surprised. I'm like, you really don't need to do that yet, man. He is going to try a level two gank, however. Well, Coco's pretty far up in lane here. He might be able to grab a summon, or we'll see. Lilac comes in, flashes, gets a slow with the Q, but Coco just walks away. Ambition turning things around a little bit. Whoa, taking a lot of damage though from Frozen. Coco dealing a decent amount himself as well, though. And so, flash used by Coco. A little bit of a win there for IM. And Apple now trying to get some pressure down. Did shove up that wave early. And remember, he's level two. He got that faster level two and TP'd in. So that's some nice harassment. That's a very good response. 
to that early buff, and I am really fighting back and trying to three buff in return. Yeah, looks like they're gonna be able to get it as well, too. Shy just sitting up in that top lane farming. Apple level three, so he's not really gonna be down in strength really at all, it seems like, to, to uh, Shy. And Shen. This is just such a clever response by Incredible Miracle to what they saw last game. Because what happened was the buffs went down early because CJ had that cute little warding pattern that gave them information. But instead of just going and trying to take the enemy buff, IM decides to level two gank the mid lane to put some pressure on. And they also use that edge that they had due to the faster kind of level two and the item grab from Hecarim to just to teleport in and then put the pressure on because he has more AOE early on to push the wave. And then he invaded the jungle just to set ambition a little bit behind right there. So I am saw what CJ had done last game and they make a change to play more aggressively and really punish CJ. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit for, for playing that boldly. Oh, every little bit counts. And with a team like CJ, you really do need to get all the little edges you can in the early game because when they start to team fight later on, you want to be ready. Yeah, you definitely do. Shy having a harder time this go around now that Apple really does have that kill pressure on him. And Apple's just playing that lane. Look at his positioning, very far forward right now. In front of the creep wave just to zone Shy off and force him to take damage from the rampage if he does walk too close to CS. And it's a problem, Shen farming under the turret, just not the most efficient champion at clearing waves until he gets that Sunfire cape. So this is opening up Apple a lot more time to roam. They're gonna focus on Coco this time. Yeah. And this is one of the problems with Shen. Oh boy, here we go. Apple pops at E, trying to get it onto Coco there. Coco drops that Sand Soldier. Looks like he'll be able to get away with the heal, but another summoner burned. This is really much better play from Apple. Looks like, he. and by the way, he, did, he switched from Ignite, so he is going for, oh. Oh yeah, you're right. Wow. I like tries to catch Coco. Couldn't quite land the W though. So he did switch over to Smite again. Not sure how much I like this. I think maybe he could have done more work uh, with the Ignite in lane. Yeah, would have certainly had that early pressure, but you know, maybe just saying, I'm gonna roam instead. Whoa, action in the bot lane. Mad Life in space could be in trouble as Lilac is coming in from behind. Roar has the flash getting low space, grabs that first blood. And CJ actually turning this one around. Lilac getting very low as well, too, as Shy was able to TP down. Oh, space gets knocked up just barely out of turret range there. That was very nearly a kill for Ignar. Yeah, and space has to use the both summoner spells in the end. So both duo lanes just dumping all their summoners in the bottom side. And that would have been a good gank had Shy not been set up for that teleport. Remember, they had TP advantage, so, so Shy was able to make a play while Apple was not. Apple uses TP very early on in this game. And look at the timing too. Sure, Shy's TP is down, but guess what? It's right as he hits six. So now he can match the TP for Apple. Really good timing from CJ Entis. Uh oh. Oh, Lilac. He's getting got low. a shield. It's fine. Oh, come on. Way to kill the drama. <laughs> so coming into that little team fight on the bottom side, it was. A great move from CJ, great timing. And because they moved forward, the parallel convergence from Lilac, it didn't do much of anything because they didn't have to retreat. They could just walk forward for the kill. Works well. And yeah, they also managed to do that right before Apple's teleport came back up too. Oh, Coco going in, there's the stun. Can Coco get behind him? Frozen taking a lot of damage. Here comes Apple though. And they need to back off. Coco, without that flash, not able to do the flash emperor's divide shenanigans that we saw last game. Still got the cleanse, got the flash out of Frozen. That's another win as we yep. start to scrap. Oh, Ambition gets knocked up. Apple able to get in there with the Onslaught of Shadows. Mad Life turns around, the W dodge. Lilac comes in, throws that time winder. Apple very low, a kill comes in for Mad Life. CJ turning it around. Coco taking some damage from that Chaos Storm, but Frozen just doesn't have a lot of damage in general yet, so CJ just kind of waltzing their way through it. Shy is just using his two teleports absolutely beautifully this game. That's the second kill he's helped to pick up. Didn't get an assist on that one, but even so, uh, just coming in with that Stand United and picking up, actually, I think he did get a kill, an assist on that one, just not on the first one. Yeah, I believe so. But his teleport on the first one prevented Space and Mad Life from having to run backwards on the Echo Gank. So now there is a very small amount of time. Apple just 
galloped into that middle lane. He didn't actually use a summoner to get there. So he's got it up. He's got a very small window of just about a couple minutes to do something with this while Shy has already made two plays on the map. Well, Dragon is still an option for IM if they can maybe find an angle to have Apple teleport down for it. Because it is kind of now or never if they're going to try to take advantage of this teleport edge that they've got. Uh, I mean, Space also is, you know, he's got his rockets already. They're going to be able to poke out the enemy. We're going to grab a blue buff, but this is not a very obviously good situation for him. They're not that far behind yet, but they haven't been able to control the game really in any sense so far. Yeah, that's and that's been kind of their problem all season long is they're able to, you know, once in a while make a decent play, but they just don't seem to know how to kind of work the map in their favor. No, they really don't know how to close, too. Yeah. Even if they do get a lead, it they have no idea how to actually finish a game efficiently or what is the... Uh, the priority of objectives that they need to go for. So Apple gonna get a deep ward in, just check out the Gromp right there, see if anything's going on, but the time is ticking to when Shy has both of his global abilities back. Yeah, and CJ probably gonna try to go for the Dragon at that point, I would imagine. Meanwhile, Shy able to get a pretty massive CS lead for this point in the game against Apple. Up about 20 already. That's a bit surprising. Well, I mean, Apple spent a lot of time running around the mid lane right there while Shy was farming in top, and then Shy just TP'd down with his ultimate for the fight. So Apple has been intentionally missing out on CS, trying to make plays elsewhere. Well, Coco taking out that pink ward from long range. How does the Sand Soldier see Azir command him to poke the thing with the spear from over the wall? Well, they're connected by that, that sand by a cosmic sand binding, line. if you will. It's actually just, uh, the sand line is actually just a string with two cups on the end, so he just uses it to talk to him that way. But they are ancient golden cups. <laughs> are they? Oh, I'm sure. Does he really need a fancy golden cup? Have you seen Azir lately? Of course, <laughs> of course. He goes about as fancy as you can get. Look, he's got like, he doesn't have a cape, he just has like three kind of like mini thin capes on his arms which I guess can describe the idea of wings as well <laughs> on a bird, but that's not what these are. Azir can't fly. He looks nothing like a bird. No, except for his head. That looks a lot like a bird. <laughs> and literally everything else about him. Depends on what emote you do. <laughs> Shy continuing to farm in this top lane. And a fight in mid. Lilac able to get out of that one. Mad Life flashing though, drops the Tibbers. Lilac in trouble and there's space. Taking him down with the Phosphorus Bomb rocket combo. Oh, Nar comes in, or Ignar comes in with a big pulverize, but only Frozen there to follow up. They've got the Chaos Storm, but again, just not doing a lot of damage. CJ just kind of partying hard in that one. Apple in a little bit of trouble. Shy comes in for the Taunt Ambition, trying to follow up here. Roar pops that ult to get away. Where's the stun from Annie? Doesn't really look like it's loaded up just yet. Ambition comes in, doesn't connect with the Body Slam. They get the slow on Ignar. Oh, Shy going deep for another Taunt. Ignar forced to flash. A lot of summoners used on the LZIM side there. Now, I am um, actually did prevent CJ from taking a dragon right there through. So throughout all that engage, they didn't lose anybody else. They traded TP for that Shen ultimate as they did get caught a little bit in the choke there. Oop. Nah, that's not gonna work. Not really the best parallel conversion. So can IM actually come back right now since everyone on CJ had to recall and start to take that dragon? They but probably could, but they're not going to. Well, they're, they're definitely not going to, I guess, as Apple's back in the top side once again. Now remember, CJ has that teleport advantage again now. Having two globals on your top laner is just ridiculously powerful. And we just haven't seen the Shen punish that much this game. I mean, Apple got one roam off early and was able to put some pressure on the blue buff, but that was about it. He hasn't been able to make anything else happen with his Hecarim. Yeah. I wonder if he had stuck with the Ignite, if he would have been able to pressure hard enough to kind of stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shy. I just think it's a better idea right now if you're going to be going up against this Shen to try and shut him down early when he doesn't have that wave clear and when he's quite weak. Yeah, makes sense. Blue buff is back up for IM. We'll see if CJ can find a way to grab that one. 
I am looks like they really don't want to lose it though. That dragon is still up too. Shy and Apple meanwhile dueling. The duel of lose a little health, gain a little health. Wow. Ambition really going for this actually. Starting to wrap around. Oh, There's a lot the of people slam. there. Yeah, that's right. Ambition could just get killed, and he will, yes. Wow, no, flashes away. There he goes. Ignar with the kill there. Shy comes in, taunt onto Ignar, coke over the wall as well. Space there to add in the damage. Mad Life drops Tibbers. They're only able to get the kill onto Ignar, though. Ambition looks like some miscommunication. He went in way, way early there. He also just didn't have the Stand United to help him out yet either, yeah. so they're still going to be able to get a dragon out of this. Remember that with Apple in the top side, there's an imbalance in favor of CJ since they traded one for one in the bottom side of the map. So that's going to be an easy objective, but they may have to trade it for a tower in the end. We'll see how fast Shy can crab walk his way up into the top side. Uh, looks like he'll be able to save it. It's going to take another wave or two before that turret goes down by itself, and Apple already recalling. So they will keep the turret alive for now. So great idea from CJ. Not the best to engage right there, Ambition in too early, but because the idea itself was solid enough when they oh. trade one for one, uh, wow, nice. Whoa, space going in onto Roar. This is a 2v1. Shy comes down with the ultimate, though. Ignar could be in a little bit of trouble. That's a lot of damage, but the taunt not ending up working out. I believe that got spell shielded by Roar? No, got no? flashed. Oh, uh, you're so right, what you're happened right. was space Valk forward, and then uh, Roar saw that Shen was ulting in. So Roar spell shielded, Space cleared it with a rocket, and then Shy was about to hit the taunt, except Roar flashed. So they did force a flash for that, but there's not really a whole lot to go for here in the bottom side. Yeah, not bad. Shy down at bottom now. There's no dragon, though. So they could maybe push these mid and bottom lanes after Shy goes back up. Yeah, and again, uh, the teleports are down now. Apples is nearly back up, so this is all a game about teleport or global cooldowns from the top lane. Everyone just making plays based on those abilities. Yeah, pretty much. First turret of the game does go to IM, though. Yeah, and they lost the turret for a flash. So that was definitely not worth it for CJ when the dust settled. Uh, they couldn't actually make the play there to get a turret on the bottom side and at least trade that way. And instead, they just kind of give up quite a bit. There's no dragon there. It becomes a lot more high risk to make moves like that, to make decisions like that, because it means that you have to get a kill to get a turret. Otherwise, you know, you could have just chunked somebody out or scared them off with a summoner spell and then forced to fight at the dragon on neutral ground. But instead, you end up in a situation early in the game where Sivir can just very easily stand under the turret and wave clear, not have to worry about much. So do you think it was a, a mistake for CJ to give Sivir Alistar over to IM? No. I mean, I think it's fine. It, it, with the first pick that they had of Gragas, they denied what looks like a very comfortable pick, pair of picks, rather, with Rek'Sai from Lilac. And now they're just going to push down this mid turret. Oh, Everybody yeah. just powering through, thanks to the Azir there for the rapid fire siege. Yeah, so getting two turrets very quickly, and that should alleviate all the stress that CJ has at this point. Nice little gold lead for them at about 3K. And Matt Life coming up. Wants to get a bit bloodthirsty, but it looks like LZIM is going to back off appropriately. Shy just moving forward in that lane, and he's got a CS advantage somehow, in spite of basically teleporting twice as frequently as Apple in this game. I wonder if they're ever going to do an update on Shen's walk. I think they will. It's very awkward. We can only hope, though. We can only hope. Yeah. Shy. Heading down to the bottom now, so the fast push is beginning. Tower's been cleared out. They want space in the top side to keep shoving down towers right here. Shen just going to move into the bottom side. And, you know, one of the great things about Shen is you don't have to be so cautious when pushing up into a long lane like we're seeing CJ Entis do because he does have such an insane ability to turn fights on their head if you get engaged on. So that's an easy turret. And the rest of CJ just continues marching forward. It's funny how after I am took their first turret, CJ was able to respond so quick, quickly with all three outer turrets. Yeah, this is a very nice siege composition. And the thing is that Shen just keeps on pushing it, putting down that pressure. 
Yep. He's got the Sunfire Cape done finally. He's in a great place to keep passively pushing that wave. He doesn't have to use mana for it like Hecarim does. Yeah, he can just move from lane to lane. Uh, w, oh, Coco might get caught here. No, barely gets up before the sun hits. Just pushes back Ignar with that Emperor's Divide. Such a crazy amount of pressure with the Azir turret down in the mid lane. Uh, and the Shen split pushing and Space already pushed up as well. It's just so easy for them to use this poke safely to continue to chunk out these turrets. Apple's there, but he just doesn't have a good angle. And Shy just gonna catch the wave and tank it right in front of the tower to move it up as fast as possible. Sun turret still alive and still zoning off. Incredible miracle. Now everyone oh, down Apple. Taunt on to Apple. He's gonna need to be careful here. Lilac coming from the side though. Madlife drops the tippers right onto it though. Here comes Space throwing in the Foster's Bomb of the Rockets for a lot more. And they are going to push back IM enough to maybe change over to this tier two in mid and take that down. Yeah, uh, CJ will. has just been doing a great job of rotating in between these tier twos in the mid game. They've managed to maintain such an amazing amount of pressure based off of the item power spikes that they're in right now. If we look, the Sunfire, the key items to these builds are the Sunfire and the Trinity Force. And they got both of them and are just maximizing the value of that power spike pretty much right now, doing a ton of damage to the towers. Like you said, getting that outer down very quickly, using that that power to just keep on pressing forward and getting a lot of damage done to the tier twos. Very nice use of those items. Yeah, you can use this edge too to make sure that you have the edge over the dragon area as well from this point going forward in the game. And it's kind of that slow constricting victory now for CJ that comes along with a lot of these poke type siege comps. Yeah, well, and the parallel convergence from Lilac, I mean, we see another one there. He really hasn't been able to hit that stun yet. It's been a pretty not so great echo performance out of the jungle compared to a lot of the ones we've seen, not in Korea, because all of them have been bad in Korea, because yeah. Ketch was the other person who was playing echo. But other places, some of the jungle, jungle echo performances have been Quite a bit better. It's a lot to manage. I mean, the W is so slow to come down, and then you always have to try to work your positioning in kind of a weird way that your uh, your clone is kind of on top of everybody. So it's definitely definitely a challenging champion from like a philosophical standpoint, right? The way you play him is very different. Meanwhile, CJ tries to take this second dragon for them. I am coming in ahead of a pulverized onto ambition. Several activated. Coco pushing people away. Space getting a lot of damage done here. Frozen coming from the side. He drops a chaos storm, but Space able to pick up that kill on the apple and CJ just taking apart this team fight right now. A couple kills come in for I am, but CJ still able to push them back. Well, CJ just didn't have great target selection right there, so they ended up with. A lot of people at very low health on Incredible Miracle, but not able to actually finish the kills, but they're gonna go for the Dragon 3v4. Oh, uh, it's a little bit risky. Here comes I am again, but with those ults out of the way, they can maybe do it. Lilac trying to get close enough to smite it. He stole the Dragon last game. Shy goes in for the taunt, and that helps CJ secure that Dragon. Frozen very low, Shy able to pick up the kill off of some damage from space, looks like. He's gonna get a double, and now Ignar and Lilac come back in. There's a teleport for Apple, but he has to run immediately. Flashes some CJ, they want another one. Space picks up a kill in the fight. Shy, Coco chasing as well. Shy taunts ahead. Goodbye, Ignar. Wow, another double kill for space. Or a double kill, I should say, and yep. I am just sticking around a little bit too long there. That well, was very they could awkward. have re-engaged had they waited for Apple right there. He wasn't that long off, by, but, the, but by the time Apple had gotten there, they had already been taking so much damage Yeah. Uh, from that 4v3 and from the Corky poke, so they couldn't turn it around. And that's this disjointed nature of Incredible Miracle that we've seen. That's what makes this team so hard to watch, is because their movements around the map. Their decisions during and after fights are always so awkward. There's, you really have to wonder, I mean, what the comms are like in the booth. I mean, we thought maybe Lilac would bring in some shot calling, but it's not looking any different today. No, it's not. And he's just failing to execute on an individual level also. Yeah, which we, you know, I mean, we've kind of expected. He hasn't been a strong mechanical player for a long time, but the echo pick really just making it hard on himself, you know? To be fair, that last parallel con convergence actually did stun somebody in Ambition, and they did set it up a little bit better that time. But even so, I mean, CJ just 
absolutely powering through right now. Obviously, they came into that fight with a substantial golden item advantage yep. to begin with, but... As usual. That was some nice play by CJ, not being phased by the 3v4. They're going to give up Baron if they do this. And it looks like they will. So Baron giving up for a tier one in bottom lane. You can't yep. stack three people on the bottom side with a team that this, that's this far ahead. You don't even have teleport on your, on your pony. Well, Baron's still not dead yet. They zone Lilac out a little bit just to make sure he can't come in and try to steal it. Uh, there we go, Emperor's Divide. They're going to push everybody back there. Baron taken by CJ, and they're just going to disengage a bit. Shy, a trap behind the Emperor's Divide, but he's fine. I, I guess I don't even know what I am expected right there to happen when you stack three people on the bottom side like that without a teleport, and the enemy team can see that there's this Baron on the top side, and four people just collapse on it immediately. They take the objective. They already had the Blade of the Ruined King for the extra damage onto the Baron. You know, I could see maybe if you take that bottom turret and then you get some nice wards in their bottom jungle, you're able to sort of get a semblance of control around the Dragon Pit and say, all right, we're going to try to maybe take this back. But I don't know, not even doing that just ended up not benefiting IM really at all. No, there's no, there's no upside. That that level of trade is just unacceptable, really, from Incredible Miracle. You can make that trade, even if you do get control of the pit via vision. It's just incredibly not worth it. So, yikes! Now they have to deal with this Corky, who is already quite strong. Yeah, it's a pretty fast blade of the Ruined King too for a Corky to get after that initial power spike. So, very fast. Five zero three. <laughs> Space is pretty fed. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. I mean, usually it's only a couple minutes earlier than now when you see a Corky pick up those Sork Shoes and they've got the uh, the power spike from Trinity Force Sork Shoes, but Space already with that blade, and yeah, they're gonna they're gonna pretty much tear through objectives at this point. It's also just this huge turret lead, right? Because yeah. they snowballed so well earlier, uh, it's not even necessarily the kills, but just the number of towers they got with their advantage that is tilting the gold lead in this direction. They're going to keep it up, too. No reason to stop with this Baron buff. Yep, might as well use every second of it. And it looks like they'll get quite a bit out of that Baron buff. Yeah, I'll shy just, just yeah, <laughs> go into town. Yep. You know, that's another advantage of his passive being up more these days, is he does do more damage to turret over time. Apple getting slowed down. Yeah, they might be able to catch him here. Frozen and Roar coming in, though. Ooh, CJ may have overstayed their welcome. Onslaught of Shadows comes in. And Ambition and Shine, a little bit of trouble. Oh, Coco comes in with a great ultimate. Lilac from the side, though. They've still got CJ low. It looks like a kill on Coco will be the beginning of this fight there. The inhibitor didn't go down either. So I am able to actually turn this fight around. Oh, nice double kill for Frozen. And so they save their inhibitor. They get a couple kills. CJ, a little bit sloppy there. Shy and Ambition did not need to stick around that far. No, really what, what should have happened right there from CJ is they should have just tried to back off. And the rest of CJ should have just tried to take a turret and an inhibitor during the meantime. It doesn't really matter if you lose your your top laner who's split pushing right there. Yeah. As long as you take the inhibitor in the end. Instead, you give up a couple of kills by walking all the way across the map while LZIM was already grouped. And now you're going to lose a mid lane turret also. Just not a great... Great closure to this game from CJ. Yeah, I don't know if how I don't know how seriously CJ is taking this one at this point, but should still try to be a little bit more crisp than this. Okay, so I mean, it's going to be a nice shop for CJ here as they start to look at their third dragon of the game. Pretty early on into this one, but it has been. A very one-sided affair between these two teams tonight. Oh, yeah. Last Whisper picked up by Space now as well, too, in case he wasn't doing enough damage. <laughs> I mean, the Trinity Force on Shen is going to be good. He just completed it again. So he's doing the same build that he did last time, going for the Phage, Cowl, and then into the completed Trinity Force. So he has some extra MR there. But, I mean, the lower cooldown's obviously going to be useful on Shen. He's able to spam that Vorpal Blade pretty consistently for the Sheen procs also. Yeah. Great duelist. Oh, here comes Apple teleporting in. Nice head, but Pulverize and Mad Life Inhibition. A little bit of trouble. Coco turns around. Where's that Emperor's Divide? W, Parallel Convergence doesn't add anything for Lilac. CJ able to kite this one out well. Now Coco goes in. Great Emperor's Divide locks up a lot of 
LZIM and the kills start to come in. There's a double though for Frozen, but more members are falling on the IM side. Frozen getting very low, Shy looking for one, gets caught by that gravity field. Ambition tries out, but Shy still picks it up anyway. And with Apple in trouble here, when this kill comes in, it's going to be an ace and certainly going to be at least one inhibitor for CJ. It's not going to be more than an inhibitor, though, because they just don't have the minion wave to back it up right now. So that's it. That's the extent of the damage that is going to be done, at least for the moment, besides taking that dragon in the end. Coco, again, continues to have very aggressive engages. That was actually a beautiful Azir combo that came out and allowed for the cleanup right there. Coco probably, though, if he wants to make moves like that, maybe wants to focus on his earlier Zonia's Hourglass so he has more survivability because the way that he boxed everyone in in that team fight was quite impressive so that Shy and Ambition and Space could come through and grab a few kills. He's going really deep. It's it's almost like he's playing this Azir more of like a utility role, setting things up for the rest of his yeah. team than doing a lot of damage himself with the way he's going in, making a play and dying. And if you want to do that, it's fine. It's absolutely fine, but sure. it's much better with the Zonia's Hourglass. If you, the Luden's Echo, for the way he's playing it, I don't feel is ideal. Yeah. Yeah, you could certainly get a lot more damage done if you weren't going that deep and dying every single fight, even if you do set things up for your teammates. Yeah, he doesn't, no, I think he's doing an amazing job of setting up the team fights. That That is very impressive. And by kind of corralling the enemy, but if he has the Zonius, he can also live while doing that and still fulfill his function. Living is nice. Gonna go in onto Apple while pushing him back with that Emperor's Divide as well. After going in, bending the soldiers just a bit, Madlife comes in, doesn't even really need to help. Shy ulting in. Wants that assist. Got to get it. Wants to stand united with his bird soldier friend. Uh, now they've got everything they want. They got the kill onto the Hecarim. That means no one's going to be able to split push effectively to keep these super minions that have started to s collect on the outside of the base of the bottom lane. So slow and steady here for CJ should just be fine. Parallel conversions, no follow-up from Lilac, and now the fight begins. Lilac getting in the back lines a little bit, but CJ just all over Frozen immediately. He goes down, Tibbers gets dropped, doesn't get a lot of stuns, but there's a double kill already coming in for Coco. Nice taunt from Shy, able to use that Trinity Force to just burst down Lilac. And this one is all but over at this yeah. point. Yeah, I mean, I said slow and steady. That would have been the safe way to go, but they just decide to go all in instead. Oh, so you got to teleport onto a super minion from Shy just to keep it alive right there, and they continue to pile on through with the Emperor's Divide. Oh, Roar getting poked really hard by this Azir. And might not get the kill. Looks like they're happy with the Nexus. I think I would be too, and CJ takes a pretty dominating 2-0 over Incredible Miracle. Not a surprise, but for a CJ fan, good to see. Yeah, definitely very convincing win as many teams have been doing against IM recently. Not really the best test of a top team, and Kind of what we expect from any of the top six teams in this league right now when they yeah. go against teams like Spenu or IM. Well, if CJ would have struggled at all against Incredible Miracle, I think there would have been some pretty serious questions that would have had to been leveled against this squad, but they looked good. They looked uh, pretty pretty tight overall. You know, maybe trying things a little bit more aggressively than, uh, than usual, but hey, against a team like IM, there's a, a little bit of room for experimentation. You know, we saw the Bard, we saw the aggressive engages from Coco. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Tough times for IM. Continue, though. Yep. I really like Shy's Shen in that last match, the way that he.